internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Now you've already learned demand and supply, equilibrium, how these curves shift, consumer surplus, producer surplus. So now it's time to take all that stuff and solve a mystery, specifically a chicken murder mystery. This murder was actually cut on tape. This guy was dumping boxes of live baby chickens into a barrel to drown them. Oh, that's so sad. Let's see if you can use economics to explain why this is happening. So here's some clues. Number one, this is not just some random guy that likes killing chickens. He's actually a chicken farmer whose job is to raise chickens. Clue number two, the year is 1971. And clue number three, this guy's president. In 1971, the US economy had a serious problem with inflation. So to keep prices from going up even further, President Nixon did this. I am today ordering a freeze on all prices and wages throughout the United States for a period of 90 days. This was the first time that widespread price controls were used in the United States since World War II. But economists were the first to point out the policy was gonna lead to a lot of unintended consequences like murder chickens. One of the many problems was the price freeze didn't apply to all goods and services. So the price of chickens couldn't go up, but the price of agricultural goods and chicken feed could go up. And the result was chicken farmers that couldn't make a profit off selling those chickens, so they drowned them. In an introductory microeconomics class, you have to be able to draw what happens to consumer surplus, produce surplus, dead weight loss, whenever the government intervenes in a market, specifically whenever they use price controls, subsidies, or taxes. There's plenty of times where government intervention actually help society and markets. For example, when we're trying to stop pollution and help the environment, or we're trying to get rid of monopolies, or we're trying to help the poor and disadvantaged. We're gonna talk about most of those concepts in unit six, but for now, let's talk about situations where the government comes in and messes things up. Let's just assume the equilibrium price of chickens is $20, and the quantity that we're gonna have produced in the market is 30 million chickens. That's the socially optimal quantity where there's no dead weight loss, and we've maximized consumer surplus and producer surplus. If the equilibrium price of chickens is $20, but the government says you can't raise the price of chickens above $10, the result is gonna be a shortage. At a $10 price, consumers wanna buy 50 million chickens. That's the quantity demanded, but producers have no incentive to produce them, so they're only gonna produce 10 million chickens. This is a price ceiling. It's a government decree that keeps the price from going up to equilibrium. Now notice that it also changes the consumer and producer surplus. Now, producer surplus is a lot smaller, consumer surplus is here, and that's gonna lead to dead weight loss. The market is no longer producing the amount that society actually wants. So the result is a shortage and a bunch of murdered chickens. Okay, now let's switch it up. Let's say the government sets a minimum price at $30 and you can't sell chickens for anything less than that. Again, we're gonna be at disequilibrium. So producers wanna produce 50 million chickens, but consumers at that high price don't wanna buy them. They're only gonna buy 10 million, so we have a surplus. So consumer surplus would be up here, producer surplus would be right here, and again, we'd have dead weight loss. <laughs> Notice that in both cases, whether it's a ceiling or a floor, quantity is gonna be less than the original equilibrium. We're gonna end up with dead weight loss. Now, one of the things you're gonna have to watch out for here because teachers and professors love it is putting a price ceiling above equilibrium or a floor below equilibrium. In those cases, the floor and the ceiling are not binding. In other words, nothing will happen in the market. So for example, a price ceiling at $30 has no effect in the market. Nothing's gonna change. Consumer produce surplus will be exactly the same as it was at equilibrium because the price is gonna stay at equilibrium. So just remember, to be binding, to have an effect on the market, a price ceiling has to be below equilibrium and a floor has to be above it. Now, policymakers and economists know the problems with price control, so a lot of times they move away from ceilings and floors and instead use subsidies. So let's analyze what's gonna happen when the government gives a $10 per chicken subsidy to chicken farmers. So now each chicken can be sold for $10 less than before. So the supply curve shifts to the right by a vertical distance of $10. And on the surface, that looks great. The price has gone down, there's more chickens being produced, and everyone's happy. But there's some hidden costs here because this graph doesn't show all the money the taxpayers are giving these chicken farmers. That new equilibrium price of $15 is how much consumers are paying for chickens. But don't forget, producers get another $10 on top of that. So how much the producers get to keep is $25. So that $10 per chicken subsidy times the 40 million chickens we're producing represents the amount that taxpayers have to pay the chicken farmers. And the biggest problem is we're still not producing the amount society wants. In fact, we're overproducing chickens. We have 40 million instead of 30 million. That subsidy was a bad idea. We have way too many chickens. And again, we'd have this idea of dead weight loss. 
Just someone get her out of here! Okay, last one. Let's go look quickly at taxes. Let's say instead of a $10 subsidy, there's a $10 tax for each chicken that these producers make. Each chicken would cost $10 more, so the supply curve would decrease by a vertical distance of $10. So now the new equilibrium price is $25 and the quantity is $20 million, but that price of $25 is only what consumers are paying. It's not what producers receive. Because of the $10 tax, producers only get to keep $15. So that vertical distance times the quantity, that's the tax revenue. Unlike a subsidy, taxpayers and the government aren't spending money, they're actually getting money, but the result is still deadweight loss. <clears throat> General, continue. 20 million chickens are being produced even though society wants 30 million chickens produced. So that's the area of deadweight loss and that's the tax revenue that goes to the government. And of course, you need to be able to show and calculate consumer surplus and producer surplus. I went over that super fast, but for your economics class, you have to be able to do all these calculations and draw all these graphs, so you're gonna have to practice. I made a whole video that talks more about taxes and gives you some questions to have you calculate consumer and producer surplus, so make sure to go watch that. And be sure to get my ultimate review packet. It has a practice sheet that covers these specific concepts. It also has practice exams, exclusive videos. It's the fastest and best way to help you learn microeconomics. The link is in the description below, but don't go anywhere. We have two things to do. As you know, I always add something Thing to the wall behind me to help you remember those key concepts. So to help you remember government intervention, ceilings and floors, subsidies and taxes, I have this. This is gonna help you remember those dead chickens and it's a good reminder that when it comes to the free market, sometimes government involvement is annoying. And the second one, it's time for a pop quiz. I'm giving you a few practice multiple choice questions, but they're not gonna be on the screen for very long, so make sure to pause the video, then check in the comments for the right answer, and let me know how you did. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube videos and subscribing to my channel. You rock, until next time.